my name's Tim Taylor. I'm the series producer and creator of Time Team. I'm here to talk about our new exciting project called Dig Village. Now, in the medieval period, you sometimes hear people talking about high-status pottery, but they didn't really have uh, the concept of high-status pottery in the medieval period. It was basically functional stuff. It was for the everyday tasks around the house. Certainly, um, posh people would have been seen dead eating and drinking off pottery. If you look at manuscript illustrations from the medieval period, all the posh people are eating off glass and metal and things like that. It's only really right at the end of the medieval period when the concept of pottery as sort of display items, things that are, are things of beauty in their own right, come into being. And it's when we start getting imports from the continent. Um, there's things like this. This is a, a piece of Spanish um, tin glazed earthenware, um, generally referred to as Maiolica or Delft, but as archaeologists we call it tin glazed earthenware. Now this was real exotica in the 16th century. We weren't making this in England, so we don't know exactly what sort of a vessel this was, but you can see it's painted, it's got red, and it's got blue painted decoration on it. So this quite possibly would have been something that would have sat on the table almost as a centerpiece of the table. Now, once we get into the middle and late part of the 16th century, you start getting fully industrialised production of pottery. Um, the old medieval traditions die and you get these mass-produced utilitarian vessels. The, the general term for them is red earthenwares. They're usually an orangey red colour with a, an orange or green glaze. This is a uh, local variant on it is called North Devon gravel tempered work because it's from North Devon and it's got gravel in it but this is very typical um, they're quite often great big bowls you can see it's got a, a pouring spout on it and they're often glazed on the inside uh, as well as the outside in fact they're more often glazed on the inside now you can see there this is um, got, hasn't got any glaze on the outside but it is sooted where it's been on the fire um, but there's glaze on the inside it's a good rule of thumb if you find a pot with glaze on the inside it's almost certainly post medieval not 100% because there aren't any 100% rules um, but then once we get into the early years of the 17th century or the late 16th depending where you are tin glaze earthenware starts to be made in this country uh, the Dutch bring the technology over they start in Norwich and they move down to London and this is very typical um, this is quite a late piece it's a base from what we call an ointment pot with just little pots but uh, quite often there were big dishes big plates and they would have been painted uh, just like the Spanish stuff and this was mass produced as, as big kilns in places like London particularly was churning this stuff out it gets all over the country we get later into the 17th century and the Staffordshire industries really get going um, one, of the th one of the things you get with post medieval pottery is it tends to be broadly the same throughout the country but there's improvements in the road network there's improvements in the canal network the, the canals are starting to be built and so stuff is out, they're able to move stuff around a lot more quickly and cheaply and this stuff this is actually probably Bristol slipware simply because where we are but it's virtually identical um, to the Staffordshire slipware and usually it's this nice yellow colour uh, it's got a very pale clay so with a clear glaze it looks yellow but they decorate it with a brown slip you can just about make out these little brown lines on this this is actually a trail of slip then they'd stroke it with a feather to get this sort of Bakewell tart effect this is a base from a little cup uh, what you call a posset cup. I mean, it's only really once you get into the post medieval period that pottery cups tend to be broadly used. This is probably a piece of a chamber pot, and it's really quite ornate. Um, you've got the body clay, which shows yellow under the glaze, and then this brown is actually slip, which is painted onto the body, and then they've applied this sort of roundel with a cross on it um, over the top of that. So you do get quite ornate decoration on this stuff. Some of this stuff actually has the date painted on it, has people's names painted on it. The great big plates can be really ornate. You get scenes of um, the royal family, you'll get St George slaying the dragon, all this sort of thing. It's, it's almost art pottery. And I suppose it's, uh, with the tin glaze earthenware, it is the first art pottery. Um, the utilitarian pottery starts to change uh, at the end of the 17th century. The, mainly the glaze is different. This glaze, as you can see, 
is much, much darker. Uh, it's almost a purpley brown colour and streaky. And that's basically because they were adding manganese to the glaze. Um, again, this was developed uh, in the potteries in Staffordshire, Stoke on Trent. And again, if you're finding these dark, streaky glazes, it's almost certainly going to be late 17th or early 18th century. And the fabric's different as well, he said, dropping the shirt. The fabric's different as well. Uh, you can see. It's not the, the, the dark red, it's actually mixtures of clays and they're not that well mixed. So again, they're experimenting with mixing clays. These things are fired in coal-fired kilns, there's bottle ovens, they're firing to much higher temperatures and they really are churning it out. It's, some of it is big chunky bowls, but you do get fine drinking cups as well. This is just the rim uh, of a little tankard or something similar um, with the buff fabric. This pale fabric is very t typical of Staffordshire. The red fabrics are probably more local, or again, it could be Bristol. Um, Stonewares are being made um, in Germany from, well, the 14th century. They start making them in this country about the same time as the manganese were, so again, late 17th century or thereabouts. And I suppose the peak of stoneware production is this stuff. I know this probably looks like white china, uh, but this is actually white stoneware. The easy way to tell the difference, probably can't see in this light, but if you get the light to catch the surface of the glaze at the right angle, it's very finely pitted. It almost looks like orange peel, uh, and that's your clue. This isn't Victorian. This, they start making this stuff around about 1720 or thereabouts, and you get a mixture of tablewares and functional items. This is actually part of a tankard. You can just see the handle starting to go up. And these do come in pint and half pint sizes. And certainly in the early 17th century, um, you start getting customs and excise uh, keeping an eye on the capacity of these things. You'll find them with ale marks, it'll have AR or something like that stamped on the rim. Uh, just because it's got AR stamped on it doesn't mean it dates to Queen Anne. They were still using AR um, ale marks in the early 19th century. But you get tankards and also tea drinking kits. Tea was starting to become popular in the 18th century. It was very expensive, uh, but people were drinking it out of this fine white stonework. Usually out of little bowls in Chinese fashion. Uh, you get saucers, you get sugar bowls, everything we'd recognise in a modern tea service. And then once you get into the, into the middle of the 18th century, Wedgwood started to invent all sorts of different sorts of pottery, creamware, which is basically a lead glazed, fine white earthenware, a slight yellow tinge to it. And by the end of the 18th century, the early 19th century, proper white china is starting to be developed. The stuff with the blue transfer printed decoration or the willow pattern, I suppose you'd call it. And so that's it really, you've got this run right the way through here from this fine Spanish import from probably the 16th century right through into the 18th century. The utilitarian wares, the fine wares, the stuff they would have been drinking their ale out of in the evening or sat on the lawn sipping tea. It's, it's a really good example of the sort of progressive development of post-medieval pottery in this country.